everyone and welcome. It is Wednesday. The Knowledge Bolite crew has assembled and we are going to do a little bit of show and tell tonight. We have a, just a short little video on Howardites. Howardites are the rarest of the HEDs. The HEDs come from an asteroid like or from Vesta 4 or Vesta. So we're going to look at some Howardite examples. We have a historic one, a brand new one, and we also have Dave Pinsky with something Howardite related, but I'm not sure. So Dave, if you want to share your screen, go right ahead, buddy. Uh, this is a uh, Howardite NWA 11184. Uh, it was found in 2015. It's about three grams. And the reason I bought it is the really cool looking class in there. Uh, one thing I like about Howardites is it's like having like three different types of meteorites in one. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the uh, matrix, and then you have uh, object, you know, the dark spots like this. Um, and then what's really cool is this had some of this uh, green material. Um, not quite sure what this is, uh, but uh, and then some areas here that look like a little like uh, euprite material. Uh, that's one of the reasons I really, really like it. I can show you the other side. Uh, again, all kinds of cool stuff. Actually, it's my favorite type of uh, uh, HED meteorite because it does almost have all of them inside plus whatever else. Uh, yes. Again, it's been hit by uh, objects. And that means a lot of stuff gets mixed together and then cements together to form uh, this type of rock. And sometimes when you see some impactite from the uh, from the earth, it has a similar type of look uh, because it's the same mechanics that uh, produce it. This is a really fine grained uh, example. I, ha I have, uh, oh no, I don't have a sample of this one, but I have one that looks very similar to this. It's a really fine grain, light gray matrix. and um, I, I really hope that it shows, but you can see the green, I think orthopyroxene is what you're seeing there, those that's, green Yeah, crystals. that's what I thought it was. Um, at first I thought it was, oh, it couldn't be olivine, but no, that, that's, I think that's what it is. Yeah, and if, if people are wanting to learn about uh, Howardite, Eucrites, and Diagenites and how they differ and how they're similar, there's a Meteorite 101 video on our channel. You can search for it. Um, basically, they're a mix of all of each other's materials, but depending on the mix is what you end up with in the end, in, in a brief synopsis. Um, hey, uh, we're going to stick with you for one. Well, actually, you know what? No, we're going to leave that for our members. Uh, you, have a, you have inside information and inside pictures from a brand new meteorite on display in California Griffith Observatory. So we're going to come back to you on that next time. Uh, we're going to do it for our members only. Okay, so if you're a member, we appreciate your support. If you're not a member, you're missing out on some great content. Dave, thanks a lot, man. Okay, thank you. Um, I am going to go next with my Howard Eye. And... This is, uh, I like showing things that are available for, for inventory for people to purchase, but I also like showing off my personal pieces. And I just bought this. I fell in love with the pictures of it and I had to own it. So here we go. So what you were about to see is a main mass, which I'm really happy with. So it's a Howardite. Uh, there's not a particular official classification named Howardite Polymic Breccia, but it is a Howardite. And in the description of it, it mentions it's a Howardite, or it's a, a polymic breccia, uh, and it talks about the internal um, structure showing signs of impact melting. So first, I'm going to show you the the, the outside. It is a, uh, like I said, you, know, you just saw 148 grams, so just under 150 grams, and I think it's just beautiful. And then we get to the fusion crested side. Wait, what? Fusion crust? Oh, yeah. And it is just as beautiful, if not prettier, on the inside. So as soon as I saw this one, I knew I had to have it in my personal collection. That is a really cool looking Howardite. Thanks, Chris. Welcome to the show, bud. I'm trying to figure out what this is right here. 
that really dark surrounding area. Yeah, this is actually from a friend of, of the show, uh, Yoda Meteorites, uh, Salomo Hamad. I'm really sure I got his name right. I, but yeah, absolute gorgeous. Look at the interior of this thing. And then you also see it all the different colors and everything on the outside and exterior. But how do you display the fusion crust and this side at the same time? Yeah. So this is an example for, for rock counters uh, and also collectors when you're looking at your pieces. Um, when you look at an outside and you see something like this, that's definitely not a fusion crust. You don't see anything there. But on an HED, on an achondrite, the fusion crust tends to be a little lighter in color. So this would be a prime candidate location for that fusion remnant, well, that the fusion crust to be remaining. Uh, it was obviously oriented like this on the ground or wherever it was. This was all exposed to the sun and wind and the fusion crust was preserved. So when you're looking at your sample, trying to identify things, it really helps to put it in perspective of where it is in the meteorite. But that is my absolute beautiful new main mass. Yeah. And I got lost in it with my eye loop for quite a while yesterday, just trying to de-stress from the day. Well, wow, the crew was really quiet during that one, guys. I hope it wasn't boring you. <laughs> no, I'm almost speechless. That was beautiful. They're, they're all busy drooling. <laughs> ah, that, that one is very poly in poly mix. Many different components to that one. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at that thinking in the Met Board, really, really nice that they call that out as a classification, but there is none. I looked at all the Howardites, and there's a Howardite anomalous. There's a Howardite impact melt, but and there's Howardites. This is listed as a Howardite, and then under the description, obviously, it talks about it being a polymic breccia composed of blah, blah, blah. So I think it should really be reclassified or a new classification be given to it, potentially others, obviously. Well, I'm glad I wasn't boring you guys with that sample, at least. So good to hear. Yeah. And by the way, it's not for sale, no offers. Don't even waste your time. Don't even waste my time. But uh, now here is a meteorite from a newer member of our crew that I didn't know what it was. He said the name and I didn't even know it was a Howardite. So we're all here to learn. Chris, could you please teach us and show us what you have? Oh gosh, I'd love to. Now I know when y'all hear me talk, y'all may think um, the way I sound, I'm from New York City, but turns out I'm actually from Kentucky. Um, and so I, I have a little bit of a collection of <laughs> Kentucky meteorites um, there's not a lot from Kentucky. So I want you to imagine, um, I want you to put yourself into the shoes of, it's gonna be tough for some people, I don't know, a meteorite expert, like you're actually an expert in meteorites and you just happen to be walking along the shores of the Cumberland River in Monticello, Kentucky. If you look at it on the map, it's gonna look like it's Monticello, it's actually Monticello. We, we don't get too fancy with the words there. Uh, it's Monticello, Kentucky. Um, also happens to be the home of, I think the best cheeseburger in Kentucky getting distracted but so you're walking along the, the shore of this uh, this river and you look down and you see a funny looking rock and turns out it actually ends up being a meteorite so um i have it here and this is a sample of, of monticello and it's very small this um this sample is only um 2.36 grams but it's unique um first of all and that the person who found it was uh the late dr bruce dodd um who you know quite a significant contribution to the world of meteoritics. Um, and the story is just that. He was literally with a friend walking along the shore of the Cumberland River, looks down, sees this rock, and, and thinks this could be a meteorite, which is, which is kind of wild because I think we tell people a lot of the times, like, you know, people find rocks on the beach, and we're like, you don't really find meteorites on the beach. And as a matter of fact, as far as I can tell, just, just from a little bit of research, this is one of maybe two or three meteorites that actually were found on a beach um, that we know of. Um, granted, this was a, a river beach and not an ocean one. Um, so it's pretty neat. Um, the actual main mass of it was, I believe, 210 grams. And the entirety of that main mass is in, uh, is at the, I believe, the Planetary Studies Foundation. And the only piece in private hands is actually this one, which is why I really um, jumped at the opportunity to um, to get my hands on it for my uh, small Kentucky collection. So 
you know, it's not particularly, you know, visually interesting in a lot of ways. Of course, it was found, um, I believe, in 1982. Um, no telling how long it had been there. And, you know, the belief is, you know, it doesn't have any fusion crust or anything. The belief is that it was maybe it fell kind of in the shallows there. And then the water did what water does to, uh, to rocks. But sure enough, a little bit of it did survive. It had a little bit of vegetation on it at one point um, that kind of went away. Terrestrial vegetation. <laughs> yeah, terrestrial. Important note. So yeah, not not just super visually interesting, but but a great story. And I just I, the odds of of such a thing happening. And um, so yeah, I think it's one of only a few found on a beach. I believe it's the only Kentucky Howardite um, that exists, and it's it's the only specimen of this that, that's not um, you know part of that main mass that I mentioned. So pretty cool stuff. Absolutely, and, and it was it was basic great presentation. By the way, we we love it. I I'm blown away by 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 hearing stories like that that I've never heard before. Um, so yes, finding rocks on rivers and, and beaches is not really the best way to go, but Dodd kind of knows his stuff. And it's just kind of weird that like he found it while he's not even meteorite hunting. He's just walking around. He's like, oh, check that out. <laughs> but what I really love is the story behind it and its significance to you as a Kentucky collector, because it's the rarest of the rare for you. It, it could be the holy grail of holy grails for a Kentucky collector to find that one uh, or to have a piece of that. So congratulations, man. Really happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. Those are the stories that we're looking for. Uh, we like the deep science of meteorites, but we also like the personal stories, the personal stories of the collectors and the personal stories of the hunters and the scientists as well. So if that's the kind of stuff you love, uh, we hope you stick around, you subscribe. And uh, if you really want to support the channel, we have a Patreon that you can sign up for. We really appreciate the support. Have a great night. Thanks, guys.